The Amman School of Excellence in Lebanon provides education to underprivileged Lebanese, Syrian, and Palestinian refugee children. Amman means safety, and this school will secure their futures by breaking the cycle of poverty faced by refugees around the world and providing a chance for a better future. For 16,000 rand, you can make dreams come true. Africa Muslims Agency, empowering, educating, inspiring. سلام قولا من رب الرحيم سلام قولا من رب الرحيم 
وامتاز اليوم أيها المجرمون ألم أهد إليكم يا بني آدم ألا تعبدوا الشيطان إنه لكم عدو مبين وأن يعبدوني هذا شراط مستقيم ولقد أظل منكم زبلا كثيرا أفلم تقولوا تعقلون عادي جهنم التي كنتم توعدون إسلوا اليوم بما كنتم تكفرون اليوم نحتم على أفواههم وتكلمنا أيديهم وتشهد أرجلهم بما كانوا يكسبون ولو نشاء لطمسنا على أعينهم فاستبقوا الصراط فعنا يبصرون ولو نشاء لمسخناهم على مكانتهم فما استطاعوا مذيا ولا يرجعون ومن نعمر ننقز في الخلق أفلا يعقلون وما علمنا سيرا وما ينبغي له إن هو إلا ذكر وقرآن مبين لينذر من كان خيا ويخط فالقول على الكافرين أولم يروا أنا خلقنا له مما عملت أيدينا أن آمن فهم لا مالكون وذللناها له فمنها رقوب ومنها ياقون ولهم فيا مناف ومشارب أفلا يشكرون واتخذوا من دون الله آلية لعلهم ينصرون لا يستطيعون نصرهم وهم لهم جند مخدرون فلا يغزنك قولهم إنا نعلم ما يسرون وما يؤمنون أولم ير الإنسان أنا خلقناه من نطفة فإذا هو خصيم مبين وضرب لنا مثلا ونسي خلقه قال من يخي اللظام وهي رميه قل يخي الذي أنشأ أول مرة وهو بكل خلق عليم الذي جعل لكم من الشجر الأخضر نارا فإذا أنتم منه توكدون أوليس الذي خلق السماوات والأرض بقادر على أن يخلق مثلهم بلى وهو الحلاق العليم إنما أمروا إذا أراد شيئا أن يقول لكم فيقول فسبحان الذي بيدي ملكود كل شيء وإليه ترجعون صدق الله العظيم صدق الله مولانا العظيم Verily Almighty Allah speaks the truth Jazakallah khair Shukran and Baitar Makassi to Buta Faisal for that rendition of the glorious Quran Surah Tul Yasin the heart of the Quran May Almighty Allah accept and may Allah bless us all and protect us all through the barak of the glorious Quran Amin Ya Rabbil Alameen my dearly beloved Jamaatul Muslimin, Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh. Alhamdulillah, it gives me great pleasure indeed to present to you our speaker for today, who is really no stranger in our community, Dr. Hussein Ibrahim, who is a psychologist by profession. He has three PhDs from the KwaZulu Natal University, from the University of Minnesota in, UC, in USA, and an honorary doctorate from the University of Jordan. He also holds the title of Tansari from Malaysia University of Kolaya, and he well, is the co-founder of Easy Autism. And he's been involved in the clinic dealing with uh, mental stability, uh, which is called the Autism Trust Foundation in Dubai. Alhamdulillah, our Dr. Hussein Ibrahim, our very own Dr. Hussein Ibrahim is back in Cape Town and reaching out to do good work for the upliftment of our community, inshallah. And without further ado, I call upon Dr. Ibrahim, uh, Dr. Hussein Ibrahim to kindly address us on the very needed topic and a beautiful topic, positive parenting with special needs. Without further ado, Dr. Hussein Ibrahim, Falitafaddal Mashkura. Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh. 
Rabbi shrah li sadri wa yassir li amri wa hlul ugdatan min lisani yafqau qawli Respected elders, brothers, sisters, youth, the listening people out there, I greet you with the universal greeting of peace. It's an honor and a pleasure for me to be here today to give all of us some information on how how to look at parenting. This topic, I, I, when Sheikh Abdurrahman spoke two weeks ago about what is happening to our youth and where are we faltering, it touched my heart and I looked at what can we do for our community. It brought to me and many incidents that I was involved in while I was doing work for the parent center in Cape Town when I was running the office, parent center office in Athlone and Rylands of how many people I saw from our community here in Rylands that were involved in incest. And it might come to you as a surprise, but what really happens is, because of shame and guilt, it gets swept under the carpet. And if we're not prepared to do something about it, can we call ourselves parents? No. So looking at the seriousness of what is really happening in our society, I would like to address this topic of parenting in two forms. Basically one, I look at it as positive parenting and the second one as special needs. Now when we talk about sp uh, positive parenting, I ask the question to you, and when I ask the question to you, it's to all of us, it includes myself. What, how do you feel about yourself? What do you feel is good about yourself? Ask yourself that question and try and answer it as honestly as possible. And you will be surprised that many of us will ponder and think and we would not be able to come up with an answer. And this is exactly the same thing that is happening to our children. Take your child, ask your child, what do you feel is good about yourself? And let them try and answer that. And you will be surprised that many of them won't know how to answer that simple question. Why? That is the big question you need to ask yourself. What is really happening? Look at the bigger picture. Now, when we talk about positive parenting, many people shy away from it because they feel that there is not enough discipline involved in the upbringing of the child. But maybe your concept of discipline and my concept of discipline is different. I don't look at discipline in the form of a hiding, I look at discipline from many other angles and this is what I'm going to be discussing further. So parenting is, is, has always been a challenging role, not today, but years gone past as well. However, with the progress of technology and the way society has evolved, it's just become more challenging. For example, if you look at how many single parents we have today, no extended families, no help, you all out there alone, we haven't been given parenting as an education. We were just thrown into that role without really realizing what is needed from us 
and what the consequences is going to be. So all these challenges add up to us not feeling good about ourselves. We feel that we have failed our children. Many of us ask the, or, 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 or re, uh, respond in the sense that they say, where have I gone wrong? But please don't get me wrong. I'm not saying that your parenting ways is wrong. What I want to inculcate is that there are better ways in doing it. And hence we're going to look at some of the principles involved in positive parenting. Now, it's a vast topic and I cannot possibly in 15 or 20 minutes do justice to the topics. So what I'm going to do basically is touch on pertinent points that you can ponder about. And I'm sure with um, what uh, Masjid Al-Quds has in mind, we will be able to disseminate a lot of this information in talks and workshops that would be beneficial to the community. So our challenging roles is ever increasing and we need to harness whatever we have as backup, as information, as knowledge to be able to assist us. Many a parent don't go out for help. They shy away from, from it because they feel shy. They, 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 they feel that if they are going to go and ask for help, they're going to feel inadequate. They feel that they're going to be looked down upon. And really it's not so. We all need help and we all need to know that I'm not alone in this. There are other parents that are going through the same issues, maybe in different ways. But help is out there and you need to reach out. So when we look at positive parenting, the first issue we look at is the behavior of the child. What is the behavior really telling us? And how do we assess this and what really affects behavior? These are important points which you need to take into consideration. And among them, we include temperament, we include position in the family, we include gender, life's experiences, and the context in which the behavior has occurred, as well as the stage of development. Behavior is not just a once-off act that you must disregard. Behavior is telling you something. Sometimes it's a cry out for help. Many of our children don't verbalize that they need help. You need to extend your hand to be able to tell the child that I am there for you. So, firstly, we need to look at what is behavior really telling us and how does behavior affect the whole persona of the child? How would that behavior affect you? How are you going to accept it? And how are you going to try and for lack of words, rectify it? It is important to remember that each child is unique and you're going to change many of your principles that you will learn or the skills that you will learn to suit the need of that child. Five fingers are not the same. If you have three children, each child's personality is different and you need to address it in that way. Having said that each child is unique, they have a different outlook that is unique to them of the world and your, their experiences. And as a parent, you need to take that into consideration. The next thing you need to do as a parent is you need to look at the children's feelings. You need to listen to it. You know, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has given us two ears 
and one tongue. He's given us two ears so that we must listen twice as much as what we must talk. I use this philosophy because if you are not going to listen, you're not going to allow the child to express his or her feelings. And if they cannot express their feelings, you're not going to know what is really going on in their mind. You're not going to know that there is something bothering them. And you're going to have the result as what Sheikh Abdul Rahman Alexander said. You're going to come into a room and you're going to find that the child is hanging from the ceiling. So listen to twice as much as what you talk. And it's not just an issue of listening. It's listening with empathy. It's listening with the feeling of, I hear you. Talk to me so that I can help you. And this would go in not only for normal feelings, but you need to allow them to express their negative feelings as well. So it is all the feelings that you need to listen to. From listening to their feelings, you can help them build up a self-esteem. They need to feel good about themselves. I opened this topic to say, tell me something good about yourself. Let your child tell, them something, tell you something good about themselves. But if they're not feeling good about themselves, what are they going to tell you? So you need to inculcate a way of life where they are going to feel good about themselves. They're going to feel confident. If they feel confident, they will be able to survive one of the biggest issues, peer pressure. We are, easy, we are very easily directed in a way to say that, no, it must be peer pressure. That's why my child is doing it. But if you have built up a self-esteem in that child, if you've built up self-confidence, it will not be necessary for that child to be subjected to peer pressure, especially if it is in the negative. Many a times, look, we've all been children. We know what it is. Many a times, children are pressurized into agreeing to be able to be accepted into a group. But if they can fend for themselves, if they feel confident for, about themselves, the group would rather come to them as opposed to them going to the group. The group would rather want to be acknowledged by the person who is, and for lack of words, successful, as opposed to the child going to the group to be able to feel successful. Remember that many a times the child goes to this group because they're not getting acknowledgement at home. The next very important point is you need to, as a parent, express your feelings and emotions as well. It's how you feel. And you need to express it to the child. And this brings home two things. One, you are teaching the child that it is okay to express feelings in a way that is acceptable. And secondly, parenting involves yourself as well as the child and if we look at many hadith I am not okay with these hadith and I'm sure the shuyukh will be able to tell us but the Prophet inculcated this philosophy of having patience with, the, with, with our children talking to our children and respecting our children. So if you are going to express your feelings in a way that is not going to be hurtful in any way, you are teaching your child respect, number one, and it's okay to express your feelings so that somebody else can help you. And that's what we are there for. 
Remember, we as parents have rights over our children. But on the converse, our children have rights over us as well. They did not ask to come into this world. It was our muhabba, our love, that brought them in this world. And they have rights to that. And we need to secure that. We are going through turmoil at the moment with so many things happening. Many a parent has been retrenched or they have to change jobs because of COVID and whatever. So we are going through turmoil. And if we can express our needs to our children, they would understand. But you have to inculcate that. The next issue that we need to look at is discipline. And like I said, it is your concept of dis discipline that you need to look at. Okay? I am open to correction here. I don't know what the exact hadith is. But our Prophet Sallallahu uh, said and I, I beg for forgiveness if I'm quoting wrong that when your child is seven and he's not or she's not reading Salah you can hit the child but why do you need to resort to hitting if you could speak to the child from the very beginning and inculcate a positive attitude towards Salah you then don't need to drag the child by the ear that child will have that responsibility of making the salah. And this goes in with, if I look at uh, uh, another ahadith of the Prophet, where a Prophet at the, at the age, uh, I mean, uh, gave the authority for somebody to go and lead the war to one of the Sahabas that was 17 years old. And that, that uh, Sahaba was only youth. But it, the, the person was inculcated with the ability, the positivity, the self-esteem of being able to do something. And if you feel good about something, you will succeed. Lastly, I would, in positive parenting, I would actually look at problem solving. We all have problems. Okay? And when we have problems, we seek or we look for help. If we cannot help ourselves, we go out to look for help. Where do our children go? Have we started a, 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 a forum in our family at looking at I can help you. Let's discuss it. And now you can see how those issues of listening skills, of talking to a child so that the child would listen, and listening to the child so that the child could talk, all comes into play. How many times have you sat in the car, you went to go and pick up the child at school and asked the child, so how was your day? And the child replies, okay. No communication. That asking that question, you haven't engaged the child. You need to change your ways in a way that you're going to engage these children so that these children can talk to you. And if they can talk to you and you listen, you will be able to help them. They are the future society. We're going to depend on them. Our years are coming to an end in the sense that you have that set number of years that you are going to live. They're going to take over. And we need to inculcate this positivity in them. Shortly I'm going to move on to uh, my, my, my apologies that, I mean, it's, this topic seems to be very disjointed but because of time constraints. But like I say that um, at Masjid al we are going to be um, giving these talks and each topic is going to be handled on its own. And I would encourage parents, 
If I can help one family, if I can help one parent, I have succeeded. I need your help in succeeding. And we can do it together. I'm going to move on to special needs quickly. I know time is running out. And when we look at special needs, what is special needs? Special needs encompasses many, many an issue. It can either be mental, it can be physical. So we look at both aspects. So it could be blindness, it could be a person in a wheelchair, a child in a wheelchair. It could be a person who's paralyzed because of an accident. And if we look at it mentally and emotionally, we look at autism, which is rife. Um, and I'm going to come to just a few stats there. We look at ADHD, which is your attention deficit syndrome, your hyperactivity syndrome, depression, which is a big issue, considering what we've gone through COVID and many of, of an individual not having recuperated. Um, and that trauma is there. But that trauma is not only there now. Five years down the line, the child can suffer from post-traumatic stress disorder. Okay, um, it, You look at issues like uh, visual impairment, you look at multiple disabilities, you look at um, deafness, intellectual disability, where you have learning disabilities and learning uh, um, inadequacies in school. Many a times you want to know, but I'm giving him private tuition or her private tuition, and still she's not or he's not performing. So what is really going on? Okay looking at um, dyslexia, so many um, special needs, okay? But with, with the help of a colleague of mine in Dubai, we've, um, uh, we've devised a video program that would actually be able to assess a child in three videos of, of, of three minutes each. We'd be able to do a diagnosis of what is really going on with the child. And if anybody wants to make use of that facility, please, they are most welcome to do so. It goes under easyautism.com, and we can assist, assist you in that, in that regard. But we need to look at these disabilities, and I term it as disabilities, because it is, it disables the child, okay? If you look at the stats of autism, in 2008, it was one in 68 children. In 2018, it was one in 44. At the moment, we're standing on between one to 16 and one to 20. These issues are rife. Many a parent don't ad either admit to it or they sweep it under the rug because of denial or, or guilt. These are Jannati children. They need to be handled in a different way in the sense that they've got special needs. And when we take the principles of positive parenting, we adapt it according to what they are capable of. Like I said, you have three children, five children, each one of them are different. And we need to address this in that manner. Ask yourself, what are you prepared to do for your child? I'm extending my hand to help. Are you prepared to meet me halfway? If Allah grants us that strength, we can accomplish a lot. Our future depends on our children. And I think I would like to end off in making, in reading out one hadith of the Prophet where it brings home the utmost importance of upbringing. 
the Prophet who has been the greatest role model that is the epitome of the peak of what parenting should be said indeed among the believers with the most complete faith is the one who is best in conduct and the most kind to his family. We owe it to ourselves, we owe it to our children, and we owe it to the Prophet. Shukran, Jazakallah khair. Takbir. Allahu Akbar wa lillahi alhamd. Shukran, Jazakallah khair and Bait Ramakasi, Dr. Hussein Ibrahim for a very powerful message. Indeed, positive parenting and special needs, which a message actually stems from the glorious Quran. Because if we look in Surah Luqman, we'll see how Allah speak to us with regard to the bond that should exist and the relationship that should exist between every parent and the child. Also the story that Allah speaks to us of Nabi Ibrahim salam and his son what to do with the Qurbani, Nabi, Ibra, Nabi Ismail salam. it's all got to do with positive parenting and how to produce positive children that can be an asset for our community and our society. Shukran, Jazakallah Khair. Two weeks ago when I spoke on the high rate of suicide amongst the youth and also the factor which is con a major contributing factor and that is depression. Dr. Hussein Ibrahim was one of those professionals who approached me after Juma and said, I'm prepared to put shoulder to the wheel. At the moment with the committee of the masjid and the board of trust, the imamat is also tapping other psychologists and professionals how we can make the masjid a hub of activity. The masjid must become alive. It is not only for salah. It should be the hub of activity and the center of the Muslim community. There's many children, youth in our community who are suffering with serious problems and they've basically got hardly anywhere to go. So we need to reach out. So inshallah we are in the process how we can run workshops, how we can run various programs. I've already tapped certain uh, psychologists and other professionals in our community. Come put your shoulder to the wheel. Do something for your community. Now that Allah has caused you to achieve your, your credentials and, and, and your qualifications, do something positively and put back in the community. So I want more professional people, please come to the front and put shoulder to the wheel. Let us work for the upliftment of our community. Inshallah. Amen. May Allah bless us all. Amen. Ya Rabbal Alameen. Dr. Hussein Ibrahim, of course, got three PhDs from the KwaZulu Natal University, from the University of Minnesota in the USA, and also an honorary doctorate from the University of Jordan. He's a co founder of Easy Autism and doing tremendously good work. May Allah bless you, Dr. Ibrahim Hussein, Hussein Ibrahim, and may Allah preserve you that you can continue with the sterling work and the good work that you are busy with. Amin Ya Rabbal Alameen. Just a very few uh, announcements. We have been asked to make dua for Haji Saeed Dolly, affectionately known as Ami Dolly from Belgravia, who is not too well. May Allah grant him Shifa and Kamila. Also for two-year-old Zahra Mauser, who is quite sick at the moment, we ask Allah to, to grant her Shifa and to all our sick people at home and in hospital. And then at the gift shop at the back, we need another person but a lady. If there's any ladies who are prepared to come and give their services and be employed at the gift shop at Masjid al -Quds, you are welcome to contact Sister Zahira with your details and we will set up an appointment and an interview for you. A lady who is interested to serve in the gift shop here at Masjid al -Quds. Also, I want to appeal to people 
to when we park here, especially at the masjid on a Friday, kindly be very, very considerate. You can see on the right hand side of the masjid, there's only one uh, entrance we have for disabled people with regard to the ramp for the wheelchair to come up. Last week, the per person on a wheelchair couldn't come be through, nor could they come into the masjid because the people parked very, very terribly on that side. I ask you with all utmost respect, wherever we park, let us park with the greatest of consideration for others as well, inshallah. And last but not least, we have been asked by one of my brothers from Morocco, who is staying here in Cape Town, to make dua for Jawad Jarari from Morocco, who I think it's his father, who passed on ten, the 10th of July last year, that Allah fill his qabr with nur and grant him and all our deceased people Jannah to Firdaus. Amin, Ya Rabbal Alamin. Shukran, Jazakallah Khair. Our Arabic khutbah will be done by one of our young sons of the community, Hafiz Mayer Didriks, and the Salah will be led by my co-imam, one of our co-imams, uh, Hafiz Ali Pangakar, inshallah ta'ala. Shukran, Jazakallah Khair, and Baya, Baya Tramakasi. Allah Akbar, Allah Akbar Allah Akbar, Allah Akbar Shuru Allah ilaha illallah أشهد أن لا إله إلا الله أشهد أن محمد رسول أشهد أن محمد رسول الله حي على الصلاة حي على الصلاة حي على الفلاح حي على الفلاح الله أكبر
ان الله وملائكته يصلون على النبي يا ايها الذين امنوا صلوا عليه صلوا عليه وسلموا تسليما اللهم اعز الاسلام والمسلمين واذل الشرك والمشركين رب اختم لنا بالخير برحمتك يا ارحم الراحمين والحمد لله رب العالمين الله اكبر الله اكبر الله اكبر الله اكبر اشهد ان لا اله الا الله اشهد ان لا اله الا الله اشهد ان محمد رسول الله اشهد ان محمد رسول الله حي على الصلاه حي على الصلاه حي على الفلاح حي على الفلاح الله اكبر الله اكبر لا اله الا الله الحمد لله الحمد لله الذي انعم علينا بالاسلام والحمد لله الذي والحمد لله على نعمة الإيمان والقرآن والحمد لله الذي أرسل رسوله بالهدى ودين الحق ليظهره على الدين كله وكفى بالله شهيدا أحمده سبحانه وتعالى حمدا زكيا وأشهد أن لا إله إلا الله وحده لا شريك له شهادة يجعل لنا بها في الجنة قصرا عليا وأشهد أن سيدنا محمدا عبده ورسوله الذي لو رأيته لرأيت وجها قمريا صلى الله عليه وعلى آله وأصحابه صلاة وسلاما دائمين متلازمين بكرة وعشيا وسلم تسليما كثيرا كثيرا فيا أيها المسلمون اتقوا الله تعالى وكرسوا حياتكم في طاعة الله وفي طاعة الرسول صلى الله عليه وسلم وتمسكوا بدين الإسلام فإن الله تعالى يقول في القرآن المجيد أعوذ بالله من الشيطان الرجيم إن الدين عند الله الإسلام وقال تعالى وقضى ربك ألا تعبدوا إلا هو بالوالدين إحسانا وقضى وقضى ربك ألا تعبدوا إلا إياه هو بالوالدين إحسانا إما يبلغن عندك الكبر أحدهما أو كلاهما فلا تقل لهما أف ولا تنهرهما وقل لهما قولا كريما وقال تعالى والعصر إن الإنسان لفي خسر إلا الذين آمنوا وعملوا الصالحات وتواصوا بالحق وتواصوا بالصبر صدق الله العظيم وقال رسول الله صلى الله عليه وسلم الدين النصيحة صدقت يا رسول الله صلى الله عليه وسلم أقول قول هذا أستغفر الله أستغفر الله أستغفر الله العظيم لي ولكم ولوالدي ولوالديكم ولسائر المسلمين والمسلمات والمؤمنين والمؤمنات فاستغفروه إنه هو الغفور الرحيم اللهم صل وسلم وزد وتوانم ودفد وبارك بزلالك وكمالك على زين عبادك وأشرف المبادك سيدنا ومولانا محمد وعلى آل سيدنا محمد وصحبه وسلم سلم رضي الله تبارك وتعالى عن كل صحابة أجمعين الحمد لله الحمد لله حمدا كثيرا كما أمر والصلاة والسلام على سيد البشر 
أشهد أن لا إله إلا الله وحده لا شريك له وأشهد أن سيدنا محمدا عبده ورسوله قال الله تعالى أعوذ بالله من الشيطان الرجيم وما أرسلناك إلا رحمة للعالمين وقال تعالى إن الله وملائكته يصلون على النبي يا أيها الذين آمنوا صلوا عليه وسلموا تسليما اللهم صل على سيدنا محمد وعلى آل سيدنا محمد كما صليت على سيدنا إبراهيم وعلى آل سيدنا إبراهيم وبارك على سيدنا محمد وعلى آل سيدنا محمد كما باركت على سيدنا إبراهيم وعلى آل سيدنا إبراهيم في العالمين إنك حميد مجيد وارض اللهم عن خلفاء الراشدين أمير المؤمنين سيدنا أبي بكر الصديق وأمير المؤمنين سيدنا عمير بن عمر بن الخطاب وأمير المؤمنين سيدنا عثمان بن عفان وأمير المؤمنين سيدنا علي بن طالب رضي الله عنهم وعن بقية الصحابة والقرابة والأجمعين وتابعهم بإحسان إلى يوم الدين اللهم أعز الإسلام والمسلمين اللهم أعز الإسلام والمسلمين اللهم أعز الإسلام والمسلمين اللهم اجعل هذا البلد آمنا مطمئنا وسائر بلاد المسلمين أجمعين ربنا آتنا في الدنيا حسنة وفي الآخرة حسنة وقنا عذاب النار وأدخلنا الجنة مع الأبرار يا عزيز يا غفار يا رب العالمين عباد الله رحمكم الله إن الله يأمركم بالعدل والإحسان وإيتاء ذي القربى وينهى عن الفحشاء والمنكر ولا ذكر الله تعالى وأكبر والله يعلم ما تصنعون وأقم الصلاة Kindly straighten the soaps, make the soaps, and please keep your social distance and also keep your mask on. Those people I see who don't have a mask on, please put your mask on. It's still COVID, let us practice the protocols. Shukran. Allahu Akbar, Allahu Akbar, Ashadu an la ilaha illa Allah. أشهد أن محمد رسول الله حي الصلاة حي الفلاح قد قامت السلاة قد قامت السلاة الله أكبر 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 بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم الحمد لله رب العالمين الرحمن الرحيم مالك يوم الدين إياك نعبد وإياك نستعين اهدنا الصراط المستقيم صراط الذين أنعمت عليهم خير المغضوب عليهم ولا الضالين آمين خلق الإنسان من صلصال كالفخار وخلق الجان من مارج من نار فبأي آلاء ربكما تكذبان 
رب المشرقين ورب المغربين فبأي آلاء ربكما تكذبان مرج البحرين يلتقيان بينهما برزخ لا يبغيان فبأي آلاء ربكما تكذبان الله أكبر سمع الله لمن حمله الله أكبر الله أكبر الله أكبر الله أكبر بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم الحمد لله رب العالمين الرحمن الرحيم مالك يوم الدين إياك نعبد وإياك نستعين اهدنا الصراط المستقيم صراط الذين أنعمت عليهم غير المغضوب عليهم ولا الضالين يخرج منهما اللؤلؤ والمرجان فبأي آلاء ربكما تكذبان وله الجوار المنشآت في البحر كالأعلام فبأي آلاء ربكما تكذبان الله أكبر سمع الله لمن حمده الله أكبر الله أكبر الله أكبر الله أكبر السلام عليكم ورحمة الله السلام عليكم ورحمة الله الله أكبر استغفر الله استغفر الله استغفر الله على ظيمة أبو الرحيم الذي لا إله إلا هو الحي القيوم لا توب إليه ونسألك توبة وما خيرة إنه هو التواب الرحيم أعوذ بالله من الشيطان الرجيم بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم الحمد لله رب العالمين والصلاة والسلام على أشرف المرسلين 
نبينا ومولانا محمد وعلى آله وأصحابه أجمعين اللهم أنت السلام ومنك السلام تباركت ربنا وتعاليت يا ذا الجلال والإكرام سمعنا وأطعنا غفرانك ربنا وإليك المصير ربنا تقبل منا إنك أنت السميع العليم وتب علينا واغفر لنا فإنك أنت التواب الرحيم اللهم اغفر لحينا وميتنا وشاهدنا وغائبنا وصغيرنا وكبيرنا وذكرنا وأنثانا اللهم من أحيتهم منا فأحيهم على الإسلام ومن توفيتهم منا فتوفهم على الإيمان اللهم اغفر لهم وارحمهم وأسكنهم الجنة اللهم اغفر لهم وارحمهم وادخلهم الجنة اللهم اغفر لهم وارحمهم وروحهم في الجنة فروح وريحان وجنة نعيم يا أيتها النفس المطمئنة ارجعي إلى ربك راضية مرضية فادخني في عبادي وادخني جنتي اللهم اشفي مرضانا اللهم اشفي مرضانا اللهم اشفي مرضانا ومرضى المسلمين برحمتك يا ارحم الراحمين رضيت بالله ربا وبالاسلام دينا وبمحمد نبيا ورسولا صلى الله عليه وعلى اله واصحابه اجمعين قال الله تعالى ان الله وملائكته يصلون على النبي يا أيها الذين آمنوا صلوا عليه وسلموا تسليما اللهم صل على سيدنا محمد وعلى آل سيدنا محمد وأصحابه وبارك وسلم سبحان ربك رب العزة عما يصفون وسلام على المرسلين والحمد لله رب العالمين The Amman School of Excellence in Lebanon provides education to underprivileged Lebanese, Syrian, and Palestinian refugee children. Amman means safety, and this school will secure their futures by breaking the cycle of poverty faced by refugees around the world and providing a chance for a better future. For 16,000 rand, you can make dreams come true. Africa Muslims Agency, empowering, educating, inspiring.